Today is June 17th, 2019, and I'm here to do our full moon check-in. So let's begin. Okay, so <clears throat> before I get into today's reading, um, I wanted to go over some points about what to expect uh, during this full moon in Sagittarius. And <clears throat> this uh, full moon, okay, uh, obviously is today uh, in the United States on June 17th, um, which I believe occurred early this morning at 1 something uh, this morning. And so um, we should reach the full moon intensities uh, by our evening tonight. Um, so let me go ahead and read to you um, some of the information I found um, that could be helpful uh, for this full moon. So the full moon in Sagittarius is going to have the opportunity to allow us to shift into a higher frequency and higher vibration. All of us are going to have the opportunity to tap into higher realms and to explore the height of our creativity. This is a dreamy full moon that will amplify our intuitive gifts and allow us to unlock the wisdom we already have inside of us. We may forget, but everything we need, every puzzle, Every piece of the puzzle was given to us before we came into this body. And on a full moon like this, it will be easier for us to remember and gain access to this wisdom. Under the light of this full moon, we are going to be reminded to spend time with our soul and to nurture ourselves exactly as we are. We don't need healing. We don't need fixing. We just need loving. <clears throat> While this, this is a beautiful, intuitive, creative, and dreamy energy surrounding this full moon, it is also a fiery qual quality too. All through the month of June, there has been this focus on speaking our truth. <clears throat> there has been a focus on learning to rise up from the darkness and the walls we have created and step into a more authentic place where we can uh, own who we are, baggage and all. Speaking our truth is not about being judgmental or using our ego to create more shame or blame into the world. Instead, it is about getting into the root of our soul. It is about uncovering the mask and finding the freedom and the love to be true to ourselves in all situations, no matter how difficult or challenging. If there is an area in our lives that we need to be more tr uh, truthful in, if there is an area in our lives that we need to be more honest with ourselves about, the fiery quality of this full moon is going to give us the confidence and spark we need to face up to it and stand in our truth. We cannot let fear run our lives. We cannot put off doing things or avoid the life that was destined for us because we were afraid of sharing who we are with the world. My ear is ringing right now. It is loud. Oh my God. Okay. We cannot dim our own light. We cannot allow ourselves to shrink down and avoid being seen. Perhaps think about an area of your life that feels uncertain and sticky. What is your desired outcome for this situation? This becomes your target. What step can you take to start moving in that direction? This is your arrow. With your target and your arrow all lined up, you can begin moving in that direction, trusting the wisdom of what you desire and the ebb and flow of the wind to guide you. Full moons are always a point of release, so something often needs to be let go of when we reach this time in the month. We may be feeling this even more so in June, as this is the last full moon before eclipse season begins. The July eclipse season has a potency to it, which means that this June full moon is a chance for us to prepare ourselves for what's to come. 
Pay attention to any signs, clues, or triggers that are presented at this time as they may come back around to be resolved and cleared once and for all in July, okay? So <clears throat> that's a lot of information um, to kind of, you know, think about uh, during this uh, full moon, okay? You may also want to think about, think back to what was happening in your life around the end of January 2019, as events from this time may also come back around to be cleared work through or elevated to the next level making the time to journal meditate and do ritual work around this full moon will be a great way to begin getting ready for the magical eclipses <laughs> all right so you know uh with uh the sagittarius full moon i feel like it's a time of taking action okay no longer being stagnant okay because we just finished this gemini new moon thank goodness and so now it's it's time to to do it you know it's uh no longer you know just going with this back and forth energy with the gemini new moon it's it's time to to just do it is what i'm feeling so with that being said let me go ahead and tap into the energies of divine masculine and divine feminine collective for the next two weeks okay so this reading will cover from today june 17th until july 1st okay so let's get started and this particular reading uh will possibly have an extended okay so let's go ahead and find out what is the overall energy okay of the divine masculine collective and then I will tap in and see what is the overall energy of the Divine Feminine Collective. Alright, so <clears throat> that way we can kind of see, you know, what energies uh, we're actually embodying. Okay, and kind of figure out, you know, what is it that we need to do and work on, you know, for the next two weeks. And, you know, now is a good time to kind of reflect, you know, what has happened, you know, since the past two weeks, okay, since we had our Gemini New Moon. So, whatever that you are working on in the beginning uh, of the month, okay, <clears throat> it's now time to reflect on those energies and see, like, what do we need to end, okay, what do we need to close out. You know, what are the cycles we need to complete so that we can move on to newer energies? You know, I really feel like if you haven't spoken your truth back then, now is the time, you know. I feel like with this Sagittarius uh, full moon, um, people will gain that confidence, you know, to speak up for themselves and offer their truth, okay. Here we have Door to Spirit for Divine Masculines, okay? I feel that Divine Masculines are now open more to their spirituality. They have unlocked that door. So, you know, whereas opposed to, like, in the past, Divine Masculines have only been operating and focusing on the 3D, they're now open to their spirituality. And with this spirituality, it is actually giving them that stability that they're looking for. So that's a really beautiful energy. For Divine Feminines, we have Rest and Rejuvenation, number 19. You know, I really feel that Divine Feminines is uh, going to be taking the time, you know, to really rest. Um, honestly, Divine Feminines, I feel like you've been working way too hard. And um, it is really time for you to just take a break. Okay, stop doing so much. And, and just, you know, um, allow, uh, you know, for the next two weeks to rest, to meditate, and to heal while your Divine Masculine, you know, is opening up themselves to their spirituality, okay? So that is what I'm seeing, and, you know, those are really beautiful energies for a Divine Counterpart. Alright, so, let me go ahead and see... 
what is it that the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine are going to be working on for the next two weeks? Okay. Let's see what each counterpart is going to do for the next two weeks. And this is more of a self-focus, okay? More in alignment with their soul purpose and their life mission. For Divine Masculines, don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? Okay, so, you know, Divine Masculines, I see that they're opening themselves up more to their spirituality. And, you know, what Spirit is saying is that don't dim your light, okay, to fit into whatever people, places, circumstances, or situations that you're putting yourself through, okay? I really feel like Divine Masculines are still, like, involved with a group of people where, you know, they are just molding themselves to conform, you know, whatever society, you know, thinks of them, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and read from the book and see what more, you know, what the book says about don't dim, you know, to fit in, okay? Don't dim your light to accommodate someone else's smallness. We are all born to shine big and bright. The universe is expanding and you are part of the universe. So expanding is part of your nature. If someone makes you want to react, notice and slowly back away. They are not for you and you are not for them. Better yet, find it within yourself to expand and shine your light anyway. Flowers don't open and close according to who is walking by. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I I just can see this all in my head. Hold on, hold on. Let, let me uh, focus. They open and show their beauty regardless. <laughs> if others don't want to be around you or you make them uncomfortable, it's because you are shining light on the fact that they are dimming to fit in. By choosing to shine bright, you may just inspire them to turn on their light too, or not. Keep your light on anyway. All relationships are essentially an energetic agreement. The moment one person decides to start rising up and allowing their light to shine, it changes the energetic agreement and can create some waves. That is completely normal. The relationships that are meant to last will adapt to the change in energy. Others won't because they are likely born under the provocio of I love you as long as you don't shine brighter than me. That's okay. Not all people are meant to be in your life forever, but the lessons they teach can still live on. Oh, all right, guys. So this is what I'm feeling with this particular Divine Masculine Collective. Okay. This divine masculine is stuck in a karmic situation or relationship with a karmic, right? And um, your divine masculine is shining brightly, okay? They have opened their door up to spirit and their uh, karmic is not spiritual, okay? That is what I'm feeling. And since your divine masculine is increasing their awareness and their spirituality, their karmics don't know what to do with that energy. They are not interested and they're almost kind of like controlling, you know. They want to manipulate your divine masculine in a way where um, as long as they're not shining too brightly and they have the upper hand, then, you know, they can say, I love you all day long. But, you know, if the divine masculine is not on board with the energies of, you know, the darkness, obviously, you know, divine masculines, I hope, okay, are not being weak, okay, uh, they are overcoming this dark energy, okay, so that is what I'm feeling, you know, the people that they're surrounded by, okay, are very dark, and it's dimming their light, and I feel like some divine masculines might be tested, okay, about how strong they are, how divine they are, okay, and, you know, even if divine feminines, 
okay, are radiating in their full glory, okay, you know, energetically that could help the Divine Masculines to rise uh, above their karmic situations, but since the karmic is in the physical life of the Divine Masculine, you know, and since Divine Masculines are more operating in a 3D level, the divine, I mean, the karmic, you know, could potentially have the upper hand energetically, you know, against your divine masculine, okay? That is what I'm feeling. So this is a test. This is another test, okay? And here we are with the full moon, okay? And with the full moons, okay, that is endings, okay? Completing cycles, you know, uh, you know, removing yourself from things that no longer serve you. And divine masculines, if you are watching this video, don't let your karmic situation dim your light, okay? You are a spiritual divine being. You do not need to involve yourself with this negative dark energy from your karmic partner, okay? Because you already know, okay, that the true light, okay, is from your divine feminine who is sitting here resting and rejuvenating while you're in here trying to exert your energy, okay? And uh, trying to, you know, stay focused on this divinity, you know. And I really feel like, you know, this divine masculine is around karmic situations, okay. I, I seriously feel this, so, you know, let's see. I feel like that's the challenge for divine masculines for the next two weeks, guys. Alright, alright. So, what is it that the divine feminines are going to be working on for the next two weeks? We have Amara, sorry guys, these words are not, you know, my typical everyday words. <laughs> Where are you being called to journey to? Okay, so let me go ahead and read the book on Amara, okay. I'm not familiar with it, it could be a secret place that I need to be familiar with. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Here's the definition. The Celtic word Amara means a journey of the soul, a voyage on which we don't know where we are going, but our soul knows the way. If you pull this card, you're either being called on a soul journey or already on one. It could be a physical ancient place or metaphoric. <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> okay. When we journey to places that our soul remembers, a shift takes place both within us and to the planet as well. You are being called to journey to a place that is sacred to your soul. Perhaps it is a journey to the world's sacred sites, or called to cross the country, climb a mountain, lie on a desert floor, or drink from an ancient well. There are places to see and old friends to meet. I see spontaneous pilgrimages in your future. If a physical voyage is impossible, journey through the portal of your heart, follow the invisible soul trail, and be willing to explore. Maybe read a book or watch a movie about a sacred time or place, or perhaps you are being called to study an ancient lineage or body of work. Whatever your circumstances, your soul is ready to journey deep. What did I say? I was like, maybe it's a place I'm supposed to know about, you know. But also, you know, this could be a journey within oneself or actually a journey to a physical place. But if it's neither, okay, it could be like uh, doing some research of some ancient civilization, okay. And I really feel like that could potentially awaken, um, you know, maybe your previous or past lives, you know, during that era. Okay, so that is why we have here rest and rejuvenation for Divine Feminines. I really feel Divine Feminines are going to be taking the next two weeks to go within and really be on a, a soul's journey. Okay, and you know, this Divine Feminine could potentially be uh, making plans, um, you know, to go on these many um, you know, expeditions or mini vacations or, you know, something that's impromptu, 
um, to go on an explore, uh, exploration is what I'm feeling. And, you know, that is really beautiful, guys. You know, while Divine Masculines are tending to their karmic situations, Divine Feminines are going on a journey. And that's beautiful. I love it. Okay. So, <clears throat> let me go ahead and see. Okay. What is the past, present, and future energies of the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine during this moon cycle? Okay. And this is, you know, for each counterpart outside of the connection. Okay. So, before we tap in to see what the union energies are like, okay, let's see what is going on with the energies of the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine outside of the connection, okay? Let's figure it out. What is going to be going on with the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine energies for the next two weeks, okay, outside of the connection? Now, so, you know, some of these energies might include uh, their divine counterpart, but, you know, I just want to see what is going on in their life outside of the connection. Divine Masculines, okay, we have seven of cups. So, outside of the connection, Divine Masculines is really confused, okay? Um, I feel like they're faced with some sort of illusion. They're really clouded, you know? And I really feel like it's because of maybe some karmic situations that is in their physical life, is what I'm seeing. And the karmic situation, okay, could be a person. It could be a job. It could be their car. It could be, you know, anything outside of the connection with the Divine Feminine. And I really see that this Divine Masculine is really confused. They're like, I don't know. You know, like, there's just so many things to do, okay? And it is really like dimming their light, okay? It really is. And more than anything, what I feel is that since this is like too much, I honestly feel like all Divine Masculines want to do is tap into their spirituality. Like, what is all of this, okay? Divine Masculines are questioning, what does this mean, you know? And, you know, they're really taking this time to figure it out. Because here again, with this Door to Spirit, I see here number 32, which equals a 5, okay? So, I really feel like during this time, Divine Masculines, okay, for the next two weeks, is going to figure out, you know, what does, you know, their current life mean, okay? And I feel like they're going to be tapping into their spirituality, okay? Because this 3D life is no longer, you know, serving them, okay? I feel like Divine Masculines know that they have a bigger purpose here, okay? Other than living a day-to-day -day life, going to work, you know, going to their job, you know, uh, bringing home money, okay, to help support their family, okay? They know this. That is why they're questioning, you know, what is going on in their life right now. And next we have the Magician, okay? So this is uh, the past energy, okay? So what I'm feeling is that Divine Masculines had the tools uh, to make changes in their life, okay? They were working on getting away from the karmic situations, okay? Really working on themselves. And I see that, you know, they want to Harry Hundini, the karmic, okay? That is what I'm seeing here, guys. You know, this is a, a new beginning, okay? So, you know, this is the overall energy, okay, of being confused, being stuck in some sort of illusion, okay? And they know that this is, this is chaotic, okay? It's too much, and I just feel like Divine Masculine's focus was all over the place, okay? And in the past... What I'm feeling with this magician is that they were working on manifesting, okay, you know, like how they can get out of their karma, how can they make their life better, 
how can they be with their Divine Feminine, okay? That is what I'm feeling. I really feel like your Divine Masculine was really wanting to make some change of some sort. And they have gained, like, that power, okay? The willpower to make that change and the courage to do so, okay? I also see here we have Ace of Cups, okay? So what I'm feeling with this, okay, and this is the present moment, Divine Masculine, okay, is practicing self-love, okay, love of oneself, you know, and I really feel that whatever karmic situation that they were involved in, it was really dimming their light, okay, that is what I'm feeling, you know, with the Seven of Cups, I feel like Divine Masculines have focused on one cup, and that was a cup of self, okay, that is what I'm feeling, and, you know, potentially they were thinking about offering this cup, okay, to their Divine Feminine, okay? That is what I'm seeing. Because this karmic, okay, even though that this karma is saying, I love you, you know, you are mine, the Divine Masculine doesn't feel it, okay? I'm sorry, but I don't feel it. I don't feel like, you know, the love is there between them, and that is why they're so confused about what to do. You know, because I feel that the karmic uh, is using manipulation tactics to keep your divine masculine is what I'm feeling. And if they're not the loving type, I really feel like they are using their children, okay, to, you know, one-up them so they can't get out of whatever situation. Because also what I'm feeling is that your divine partner could be in a financial situation where they are codependent or dependent on their karmic for money. Okay, that is another thing that I'm feeling. And right now, you know, your Divine Masculine is practicing this self-love, giving love to oneself. And, you know, as they practice self-love, their cup overfloweth. Okay, I see that. And now they're working on giving, you know, their love back to their Divine Feminine because they have opened this door to spirit, their spirituality. Okay. I feel like Divine Masculines are transforming and changing. They're no longer, you know, operating in that 3D lifestyle is what I'm feeling. They're looking for something more, something more spiritual, okay? And in the future, I see that, you know, Divine uh, Masculines, okay, is wanting to communicate. And they're ready to remove any situations or circumstances uh, that is no longer fulfilling them, okay? And, you know, again, we see here, like, there's a few clouds left, okay? Before, th it was too cloudy. They couldn't see. They were very confused. But now, I really feel like, you know, Divine Masculines is really coming in with their clarity in the near future, okay? So I, I definitely see that this uh, is the energy that the Divine Masculines will embody at the end of the next two weeks, okay? So that's a beautiful energy, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and tap in and see what is uh, the current overall energy of the Divine Feminines, okay, for the next two weeks, okay, and this is outside of the connection from their Divine Masculine. What is the energy of the Divine Feminines, okay? of the next two weeks and we'll look into their past their present and their new future energies we have five of cups okay so overall divine feminines they're very sad you know, they still could be thinking of the past, okay? Thinking about the third-party situations that they were involved in, okay? Now, this could be, you know, them dealing with their own karma, okay? Or this could be them reflecting on their Divine Masculine, you know, who has chosen the karmic situation, okay? And, you know, they know that deep down inside, their Divine Masculine is there, but they're sad because in the physical, you know, they feel like their cups aren't there, okay? They're not feeling the emotions, okay, is what I'm feeling. 
and um, I really feel like this is going to change, okay? So that is why, you know, overall, the Divine Feminines is in this um, energy of rest and rejuvenation, okay? They are taking time out to further explore, you know, uh, their own journey, okay? Their their journey of self. And I see that Divine Masculines are mirroring uh, the Divine Feminines in their present circumstance outside of the connection, okay? So let's go ahead and see. Now, in the past, okay, I see here the Knight of Cups. Divine Feminines, okay, possibly have offered their love to their Divine Masculine, okay? And, you know, Divine Masculine probably was not receptive of this energy, okay? Because where the Divine Feminine was, you know, uh, sad and disappointed about things of their past, Divine Masculines, okay, is confused as to, like, you know, what to choose, you know, I feel like this Divine Masculine had so many options, okay, and because of each person's circumstance, I really feel like both counterparts were all in their fields, because Divine Masculines are in the Seven of Cups, and Divine Feminines are in the Three of Cups, okay, Divine Masculines has, like, way too many options, Divine Feminines was thinking about, like, their past options, okay, and uh, their connection with their Divine Masculine, okay, and because Divine Feminines have offered their love in the past, okay, I really feel like there wasn't much energy going on. Divine Masculines have been trying to either manipulate the situation, okay, or they could be trying to manifest an exit plan to get out of their karmic situation, okay. So it can go a couple different ways from what I can see here. But that is what I'm seeing. Now, what is the present energy of the Divine Feminines outside of the connection? We have here Queen of Wands, okay? So Divine Feminines presently are taking action, okay? They are using their intuition. They have the power and energy to really work on themselves. And I also see that, you know, this Divine Feminine is, is busy at work, okay? I definitely see that. I feel like, you know, if you have like your own job or if, you know, you are working, you possibly, you know, could have like a promotion or just doing something really well at your job. I really see that, well, since Divine Feminines, you know, didn't have like the reciprocity that they wanted from their Divine Masculines, they're, they're just moving on with themselves. They're not taking, you know, the BS anymore, okay? And, you know, they're like, you know what, I'm at a place where I don't need this kind of behavior from my Divine Masculine. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on with myself, okay, and just focus on me because I'm good. <laughs> that is the feeling that I'm getting from Divine Feminines. You know, yes, they are sad about the third party situation, but honestly, I feel like that's old news, okay? They are done with that. They're ready to move on. And with this full moon energy, I feel that Divine Feminines, okay, are in this power, okay? They're very aware that, you know, if the Divine Masculine does not step up, Divine Feminines is going to move on to make things right because that could take forever from what I know okay so and I feel that divine feminines are feeling that so they're taking matters into their own hands and just working on them okay that is what I'm seeing in the near future I see here eight of swords okay so what I'm getting here is that divine feminines are really stuck and trapped in their minds okay you know about moving on <laughs> You know, they're still thinking about their Divine Masculine. What did I say? I said they were moving on, and then the future tells me, nope, they're still stuck. Divine Feminines, I'm trying to help y'all, okay? Come on, man. Man, you know, what I'm seeing here is that the love is still there for their Divine Masculines, okay? They just want their Divine Masculines to speak their truth. And I see that, you know, Divine Masculines is possibly busy trying to cut out their karmic situations. They probably may not be communicating really too much towards their Divine Feminine, okay? That is what uh, I am seeing here, okay? And, you know, Divine Feminines, okay? 
just do you, okay? Try not to focus too much on your Divine Masculine because you already know your Divine Masculine is really needing to work on his karma, okay? Let him complete that cycle and get out of it. And hopefully by this full moon, okay, today, they are ending it, guys, okay? Like, this should not drag on any more than it has to. And if not, they have two weeks to clear out this energy. Every moon cycle counts, I kid you not, okay, because here we are thinking about, okay, you may also want to think back to what was happening in your life around the end of January 2019. Do you see how these moon cycles work? So, like, if you did not, you know, put an end to any kind of, you know, whatever behaviors back in January of 2019, guess what? It's coming back around, okay? That is how karma works. Okay, until you uh, work on your karma, okay, and close out that cycle, it keeps repeating. That is why people have the same types of relationships over and over. Why? Because history repeats itself. <laughs> it really does. Until you understand and learn your lesson, the universe keeps sending you the same dang messages. It could be with a different face, okay? Uh, it could be with a different person, okay? It could be your, your twin flame coming back for round 10, okay? Whatever the case may be. Just know that you have to end your karma, okay? Clear your karma before, you know, new energies come through. Be mindful. Use this full moon to your full potential. Whatever that is no longer serving you, you know, get, get your full moon rituals on tonight, guys. I, I kid you not. We cannot be in the middle of 2019, okay, and still hang on to these energies. We need to release it, okay, so that new energies can come. Now, your Divine Masculine, I feel, you know, they're, they're working on themselves, okay? Yes, they're slow, okay, but... We can't expect them to hurry up, okay? We need to release that attachment to the timing, okay? We really do. Divine Feminines, you really have to focus on yourself. You know, don't stay attached, okay, to your, you being stuck and trapped about the situationship with your Divine Masculine. Let it go, okay? Just focus on yourself and... Trust me, guys, it gets easier once you let go, okay? Because nobody should have to suffer because, you know, nobody was wanting to communicate, okay? This time with this full moon in the next two weeks is the perfect time for truth to come out. Every day that passes by, if truths were not spoken, okay, guess what? It drags out the process. You're just prolonging, you know, what is destined, okay? That is what I'm seeing. And, you know, it depends on how wisely you want to use your time, okay? Do you want to sit around and, and just pine away and see, like, okay, well, there's not much that I can do, you know? I got to wait this thing out because, you know, financial circumstances or, or whatever the case may be. Guys... I know that some of you guys are tired, you know, and I've already explained my situation, right? You know, as a single mom, I'm doing everything, okay? I am doing a lot, you know, at the end of my day, what I want to do, I just, I want to have a lazy day, guys. I want a day where I don't have to cook for nobody. <laughs> I don't have to wash laundry. I don't have to answer the phone. I don't have to, you know, do anything. I just want to sit and vegetate and like just listen to meditation music and do nothing and just watch the sunrise and go down guys honestly I, I need that okay so I get it if you have that luxury then you know more power for you because I would love that okay I would honestly love like a, a day or two just doing nothing okay nothing uh, but you know I know that everyone is busy you do whatever you can do um, that you're capable of doing. Okay, guys? So, if this reading is resonating with you so far, I'm going to go ahead and take this to the extended, okay? And in the extended, I'm going to go over what is the um, present, the past and present energies of the divine, masculine, and feminine towards each other. 
what is the divine and masculine and feminine thinking of, you know, within each other in the connection. How does the divine and masculine and feminine feel, you know, for each other, you know, within the connection. And what is divine and masculine and feminine going to do in the next two weeks, okay? And these are actions that each counterpart will take towards the connection, okay? And then I will reveal what are some of the blockages that each counterpart has and what is the future energies of divine, masculine, and feminine, okay, at the end of two weeks. And so um, after that, then I will pull a closing guidance message um, that will help you within the next few weeks during, um, you know, after the passing of this full moon um, to see if that will help you in your current circumstance, okay? So if you enjoy this reading, uh, again, you can uh, click on the link below uh, to join me on the extended. Uh, the cost is only $3.99 and, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.